Derek, I don't want to put you on the spot, but to my knowledge, I don't know that we've gone back to the single agent refractory trials with either cetuximab or panitumumab and looked at right versus left. No, this have hasn't we? been done. Hasn't been done it, yet. It, we've got those data in a bank somewhere. We could look at that. I would. We think. have one. Is there one? Cetuximab. Yeah. Single yeah. agent, right, right versus single left. Single agent. Yes. And it did. What did you? I don't know. And it's it's interesting. So survival is actually a little bit better with cetuximab on the right side versus best supportive care. Best supportive care, yeah, study. However, the PFS was exactly the same mm. on, the, on, uh, on the right side between cetuximab and, and best supportive Fire care, which three. is very intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very intriguing. So PFS overlaps, but survival is a little, is bit, is a little bit better, which suggests that, and this is when it gets, again, confusing, because you're looking at a subgroup analysis that mm. wasn't really mm. looked at prospectively. How do you make sense out of it? There's still, again, you take the benefit of the doubt and you say there may be that slight survival advantage. PFS may not be affected, but those patients are actually seeing a little bit better survival yeah. on the right and side. And this is, sorry, uh, I'm going to let Derek go next. No, I, I agree, but I don't, don't believe in these endpoints necessarily from this single trial. Sure. We clearly have to say the motivation comes from the lack of other alternatives, from other really great alternatives mm -hmm. in this setting, and the belief that it's better may, to do may something. But these do nothing. support. These do support. No, uh, I have two comments. One is that uh, the right side tumor uh, should be considered in the context of what is the disease presentation in the patient. Because if I have a patient, again, that is relatively young with uh, a bulk of disease mm -hmm. and has a right side tumor that is even BRAF uh, and RAS well type, mm -hmm. Maybe biologically is very similar to what we think about BRAF mutant patients. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we would like to spend yeah. everything we have in first line. Maybe in these patients, I will, will even try for foxirib bevacizumab. I like in I like some of these thinking. patients. Of course, yeah. I have to check which is the right patient. Then. Uh, even without the BRAF is what you're saying, and I'm sure I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, but I just want to make even sure. Even if it's BRAF wild type, wild type I yeah. would consider like a BRAF Well, we've got frontline data, again, data yeah. we sort of ignore, of triplet yeah. therapy with yeah. bevacizumab in that showing an yeah. overall survival, response rate, yeah. everything, and we sort of push that off to yeah. the side, too. Sorry, that was one of your points. And the second point was that the study that uh, we were discussing before about later lines of therapy with cetuximab versus uh, uh, best support of the care was a, a very old study, the CO17 mm -hmm. study of the Canadian and Australians, and those patients were not pretreated with bevacizumab. So we don't know in the context of a pretreatment with chemo plus bevacizumab what happens in third or fourth line, and as all of us are saying, we have no real alternative. And so in these patients, I will still try to use an anti-GFR interline, or in second line, if first line with antiangiogenesis didn't work well because you know you have those progressors to double chemotherapy plus bevacizumab. What you do to these patients? You don't use an antiangiogenic again, maybe you can use an anti-GFR. So these are the, the patients in which on right side tumors I will do an anti-GFR. Either some patients in second line, most of patients third line, and very few patients in first line if a, in the very short treatment for conversion to liver resection. But how many patients we are could, like this? Well, there are very, very few. Yeah, I would disagree right. with that. It's more academic, <laughs> right, yeah. it's more academic than real right. Uh, right. that is a problem. So fortunately, gentlemen, right. among us is the world's expert in transverse colon cancers, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Tony Sa. So um, Tony, um, is the transverse colon, which side is it on? There are not many of them, but yeah. uh, which side is it on? The transverse is, is, has not been looked at, you know, has been excluded. The, the, the Allen the study excluded Allen it. Allen study yeah. excluded it, so CLGB8405 excluded it. You know, the, if, if it's closer to the, to the uh, hepatic flexure, treat yeah. them as right. If it's closer to the splenic flexure, yeah. Embryologically, the line is at the splenic yeah, flexure. Somewhere. The, the embryology gives a clear definition, and yeah. the molecular biology doesn't follow doesn't this. Because us. molecular yeah. biology, we learned yeah. that we have a, let's say, gradual, let's yeah. say, shift of the pattern from the very right to the very left. Mm. Yeah? And we can see this by the percentage of patients showing BRAF, mutant it, it status, yeah? mm -hmm. coming from 30% on the right side and ending in yeah. 3% on the colon. And this goes continuously with a continuous decrease. And the profile of other things also, the molecular profile and the frequency of other alterations also gradually decrease. Yeah, Great but, segue. But, so but you do know, we have? In, but, but, but you're in clinic. Mm. You're, you're really not going to think, is it three, four centimeters? You're really going to just look at it. Is it closer to the side no, or closer, yeah, closer to the side? In, in practice, in a busy mm. practice, you mm. really have to be practical. And, and frankly, you know, since, and we'll talk about this later, how you treat in the first line, uh, you know, pragmatically, it's not really going to change much how you do it in the first line. 
it may complicate a little bit matters. I'm putting on. transverse on the right. Paul? Uh, well, I would tend to agree with Tony that if you have one that's really far in one direction than the you other. You pick that side. Right. And, and also, I think there's, because the molecular profiles are not, we just don't know yet because there aren't enough of them to make statistical conclusions, uh, give them the benefit of the doubt in general and put them on the left. Well, that's what I would, the segue that I was looking for is, uh, is there, do we have a gene? I mean, do we have some molecular characteristic or right now are we still stuck Principles with Principles of oncology make the best assumptions, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's still anatomy? We don't, we, we had some studies here at the meeting looking at differences and stratifications for MSI, BRAF, and the answer really didn't come out of that. Known molecular tests don't distinguish this, right? So That's it's true. still anatomy. That's Do you true. guys have ICD-10? Do you have to code? Of course. Well, yeah. I hate, you know, we all hate uh, it. Of course. But so yeah. it matters yeah. now, yeah. right? Yeah. You right. have to put the right. correct ICD-10 yeah. yeah. when, yeah. when you're seeing yeah, you're right. uh, a new patient.